Okay, so we've been studying equilibrium in general, and we're going to look at our first specific application of equilibrium, and that would be the solubility product constant, Ksp. When we make a solution, any solution, there's a maximum amount of solid that can be dissolved in a given amount of sol solvent. And that maximum amount is called the solubility of that solid. And when we get to the point where the maximum amount has been dissolved, we have a saturated solution, which means that no more solid will dissolve. If I add more solid, it will simply sink to the bottom. But when it sinks to the bottom, it doesn't just sit there. If I look on a molecular level, what I see happening is that even though the total mass of solid sitting on the bottom remains constant, I have some solid that continues to dissolve while other solid recrystallizes. These processes happen at the same rate. So the solid is dissolving and recrystallizing at the same rate. So now I have reached a state of equilibrium. I can represent this dissolving equilibrium by this equation in general. So I have equilibrium between my solid on this side and my ions on that side. Now note that it doesn't have to be plus one, minus one. It could be plus anything, minus anything. So, and typically, it would be plus y and minus x. Not always, but most of the time. So because this is an equilibrium system, I can write an equilibrium expression for it. And because it's solubility, it's called Ksp. And remember, Ksp is, any K value is products over reactants. So on the product side, I have the concentration of A to the X times the concentration of B to the Y. Now, there is no denominator on this because my only reactant is a solid. And remember, solids are not included in the equilibrium expression. So, <clears throat> when we start looking at saturated solutions and solution equilibrium, there are two cases. If the salt is soluble, so like it's a group one metal salt, so we call that soluble, a soluble salt, the KSP for that is very large, and we really don't worry about it. So when we're doing KSP calculations, we're worried about the things that we consider insoluble. So those things that we predict will not dissolve, as it turns out, dissolve to a very small extent. And this is the basis for things like water quality testing, where concentration of something like lead ion is very small, but it's not non-existent. There is some level in there, even though it's very small. And that's where we worry about the KSP and KSP calculations. So, for example, barium sulfate, we would predict, would be insoluble, but it will dissolve a very small amount. So, when it is in equilibrium, the KSP expression for this equation would be the concentration of barium ion times the concentration of sulfate ion. Now, you notice again, barium sulfate is not down here because it's a solid. <coughs> so, it is not included in the equilibrium expression. This chart is in your book. Um, here are some KSP values, and you can see some of them are really, really tiny. For example, 10 to the negative 38th is a pretty small number, but it's not non-existent. Same thing down here. 10 to the negative 53rd, almost no mercury dissolves. Mercury 2 sulfide dissolves, but a tiny, tiny little bit will, and we have to worry about that for health reasons. So... When we're going to ca do calculations with KSP, there are basically three types of calculations, as with any type of equilibrium. You can be asked to calculate K. And remember, to do that, you need concentrations at equilibrium. Now, when you're given these concentrations, it's not just going to say the concentration of this ion or that ion. What it's going to say in the problem is the solubility, solubility of 
compound X is blank moles per liter. That would be molar solubility. And that's the information you need to calculate your K. If you want to calculate equilibrium concentrations, you need to know a K value. So you would need a KSP. But again, the question is going to say, what are the equilibrium concentrations? The question will probably say, calculate the solubility of the salt of compound X. <clears throat> and then the third question we can ask is, is this system at equilibrium? And remember, for that, we use Q because we don't know if the system is at equilibrium. And the way this gets asked, specifically in the KSP application, is will a precipitate form? So we're going to examine each of these cases. We'll examine the first two in this video and the third one in the part two video. So this is a typical question on how to calculate KSP from solubility. Copper 1 bromide has a measured salt molar solubility of that. Calculate KSP. So, the first thing I do is write an equation. And I write a K expression. Now I look at... <coughs> The, and then I form my rice table, my ice table. Now, when I'm making my ice table, since this is a solid, it's not in the K expression, so no information is going to go under there. So, what this number tells me is that 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of CuBr dissolves in one liter of solution. So when this splits apart, you notice there's a one to one to one mole ratio here. So for every mole of CuBr that dissolves, I get one mole of Cu plus and one mole of Br minus. So initially, when I put this solid in water, I have no concentration. When I get to equilibrium, the concentration of each ion is going to be 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth because it's a 1 to 1 to 1 mole ratio. So if I want to calculate the KSP, I simply take those two concentrations and plug them into the expression. and I get a KSP value of 4.0 times 10 to the negative eighth. So that would be the KSP for copper 1 bromide. Okay, now if I instead I want to calculate the equilibrium concentrations of ions in solution, this is how it is normally asked. Calculate the solubility. That's really asking for equilibrium concentrations. So again, write an equation. There's my balanced equation. Notice I get two IO3s, two iodates for every one copper two. KSP is 1.4 times 10 to the negative seventh, and that is equal to the concentration of copper 2 times the concentration of iodate squared. Now I set up my ice table. Again, there's a solid, so I just put an X there to remind myself that nothing goes in that column. Okay, so initially, when I put the solid in water, nothing is dissolved. So that starts off as zero. Now, to get to equilibrium, I obviously have to add ions. Otherwise, I wouldn't have an equilibrium system. 
So when I look at the ratio, I get one copper two plus to two iodates. So if I call the amount of copper that dissolves X, then the amount of iodide that I get is 2X. So at equilibrium, my concentrations are X and 2X. So now I take these numbers and plug them into the equilibrium expression. So 1.4 times 10 to the negative 7 is equal to X times 2X squared. So if I gather this together, 1.4 times 10 to the negative 7 equals 4, because 2, two squared is 4, X cubed. Because I have to square this 2X term, so that is 4X squared times X is 4X cubed. And solving for X, X is equal to 1.2 times 10 to the negative eighth. So now I ask myself, what is X? X is the concentration of copper 2 plus ions. And since I get one copper 2 ion for every copper 2 iodate, it is also the solubility. in moles per liter. So I have finished that question as well.